So we're here in Thessaloniki at the Nanotechnology Conference. And who are you? Well, I'm George Katalarianakis. Uh, I have uh, been working with the European Commission for uh, almost 30 years. And uh, until the end last year, I have been responsible for the uh, problem of uh, the safety of nanomaterials. So, uh, with the EU Commission, 30 years. What yes. does that mean? Yeah, it's uh, building actually the European research program. It started from uh, very tiny uh, budgets, very framework pro joined the Commission Framework Program 2 and uh, I completed Framework Program 7 and then uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, also a little bit of preparation of the Horizon Europe. Yeah, it was a fascinating road. So uh, what's the Horizon 2020 and uh, uh, Horizon, what do you call it, Europe 2? Um, uh, Horizon Europe, that's the program that will start in 2021. And uh, Horizon 2020, that was a seven year program which started back in uh, 2014 and uh, in 2020 is going to be completed. And uh, I see it mentioned many places. Uh, so this is like a research fund. Or what is it? Yes, indeed. It's a, it's a research fund uh, which uh, covers uh, the uh, responsibility of the European Union. The European Commission is the executive arm. It uh, covers the funding of scientific research from uh, basic research, fundamental research, some people call it, to uh, industrial application and it covers practically everything from name it astrophysics and uh, human capital to industrial technology and uh, investment for industry competitiveness and sustainability. Uh, I must say that uh, the member states also have big investments in research so somehow the European Commission brings together all this to, to shape uh, the European Union uh, scientific community. So um, it's very important for the, for the EU, for Europe, to invest in the right stuff because that's the future, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. so this is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal and it allows to have a presence in global matters uh, regarding science and technology and the well-being and the environment, uh, the health of the citizens and the workforce and have long enough perspectives, long-term um, long -term research uh, which uh, is expected to improve our, our, our societal needs from the next maybe eight, ten years and further. So how does it work? Uh, why is it the best way to do it through the EU? Uh, because this allows cooperation among uh, different, uh, among research teams from different member states. Before the EU, uh, research uh, used to be local, uh, used to be funded by member states separately. The EU allows different competencies to come together, sometimes different scientific schools of thought, uh, sometimes uh, cross uh, sectors and most importantly maybe allow the European Union to speak with one voice and cooperate with other big forces, uh, other big areas uh, like the United States and Canada and China and Japan and, and so there is, um, European research is actually a bigger thing than the sum of the, its parts. So, um, I guess there's a ways to just say that it's already been huge successful, right? Oh, yes. I mean, there has been, uh, since the early start, there has been uh, methods and procedures for ex-post evaluation, uh, feedback, uh, uh, control of progress. Uh, it has been under a very good model of governance, I may say. And so... Um, I mean, I, I'm hopeful to see even more. And people, ha there's been this election, uh, parliament election recently. A lot of people voted, and many people want green technologies, right? Is there? I don't know if you're able to say, but in theory, one could think there should be much increased. 
Of course, of course. I mean, this is a must where societal concerns have been a guiding rule since uh, decades. But uh, recently, in uh, the Lisbon Treaty, at the end of uh, uh, the first decade of this century, this also uh, took a legal content. So the Lisbon Treaty foresees that the civil society must have uh, a better role, must be addressed, their concerns must be addressed in the acts of the European Union. And indeed, uh, the European Parliament is uh, you know, representing the people and uh, is a major platform for expression of um, uh, the, the, the concerns, the future uh, concerns of the, of the society. So we are looking, I mean, we, I'm no longer the Commission, as I said before, but I think uh, the scientists and uh, the management of the science is, is looking to such concerns with uh, increasing attention. So I expect, as you say, major progress in, in the next, uh, in the future. Because uh, we Europeans, we have our way of uh, thinking of being, right? The Americans are doing their things, let's say, I, I don't know if it's okay to say, but kind of very commercial, and the Chinese are doing their th thing. So uh, humanity is hoping to see some massive improvements in many technologies, like nanotechnology. So uh, we, we need to speed things up, right? Uh, yes, but we have uh, some uh, values uh, that are common. I mean, um, it's not long ago in the United States, President Obama spoke about these uh, common values like, uh, like, like freedom, rule of law, uh, like uh, justice, uh, independent justice, democracy. And, uh, democracy. All these values we see, we, we tend to we tend to call them Western values. In fact, they are all ancient Greece values. So equality in front of the law, freedom, um, all these things are shared and we see that they are shared more and more. So I'm confident that uh, this model, as I said, is 2,500 years old. So I'm confident that this will be uh, more our guidance for the future. It's true that we differ sometimes in, in, in the way we look about uh, entrepreneurship, uh, the way we administer risk. Um, like, for example, in the United States, we have unlimited liability. In uh, Europe, uh, we have the Napoleonian system or the tort law. So there are things um, looked at differently, but basically, I think, we are on the we are on the on, on the correct line. Yeah, of of course we are compatible with them, but we need maybe we are a hope for faster innovation and faster investment in the right fields. Hopefully, yes. Uh, and to come with solutions for let's say uh, the Green New Deal could be more European than American potentially. Uh, well, I, I think we are on a common route. Uh, maybe we differ a little bit in the details, but uh, if you look at uh, societal concerns discussions in the states and the societal concerns discussions in Europe, they are not very different. Huh? The, we are all there, we, are, uh, we have the concerns about our planet, there are ups and downs, huh? politics and so on. But if you look in the long term, uh, the bigger picture is for, as you say, uh, human well-being, uh, democracy, uh, rule of law, independent justice, freedom, um, liberty, as it's called in the United States. So, in the, the big picture is quite optimistic, I may say. So, uh, there's a lot of things, but let's say green energy, uh, renewables, but also uh, eliminating, let's say, cancer and arthritis and diabetes and all these problems. Uh, uh, clean air. Uh, I mean, this uh, going to Mars. How, how, how do we how do we do all this? Uh, well, uh, if uh, if somebody uh, would tell you that um, we would have now internet and uh, uh, with a device of uh, hundred euro, you could uh, find your way on, uh, on 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 the streets and so on. You wouldn't really believe it. So. Uh, I think we advance and we advance very fast. It's true 
that um, in the post-war environment, a scientific environment, I mean, we did not really pay much attention to environmental concerns. Not that we did not have people uh, spotting these, uh, these uh, challenges and these future troubles that we might have from uh, not addressing environmental, but I think we changed the route uh, on time and the last decades of the 20th century environment took an enormous advance forward. So we identify the, the rules. It's true at the same time that the needs, especially for energy, went up and they were not met by um, adequate progress in the alternative uh, sources of energy and so on. But again, or progress in the nuclear that were not adequately managed and we have had some major accidents there, chemical as well. But these accidents have opened literally have opened windows to look into the future and work on this with correct collaboration, correct funding, correct attention to the science. So uh, safety, consumer safety, public safety, they are better addressed now than they were about 40, 50 years earlier. So uh, with your experience, how do we do best collaboration? And collaboration is crucial, right? How's the best way? Oh, it, that's, that's, that's a tough question. Well, learning, I may say, <laughs> defining the goals, governance. So um, defining our goals, sometimes we have conflicting goals. Uh, for example, we are transporting steel to Europe and steel from, uh, from United States to Europe and Europe to United States, precisely the same steel or uh, cement from one side to the world in the other and from that other to the first. So why do we do it? So uh, our, first, our first target is uh, to establish some consistency between our targets and where we have some um, inconsistency, smooth them out. Uh, and then uh, share information, try to communicate this information and then set essentially some plans, learning from the past and also speculating about the future, so planning, make, 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 make a, a roadmap where we want to go and then some type of control if we are achieving any progress and in which terms we achieve this progress. In other words, managing our new complex system of innovation uh, governing it, preparing expert opinion and then feeding the decision makers. Decision makers are necessarily politics, uh, political uh, people, uh, but feeding them with the correct information from science is the key element in my view. So uh, science uh, cooperation, cooperation rather in science uh, is, is the most crucial step. Uh, in, in that and they're conveying this information in a correct way to policy makers and decision makers that's also a crucial part so we can take decisions not based on feelings as sometimes we have seen in recent um, cases but rather on uh, solid logic shouldn't the scientists be in charge more it's not their role it's, they, are not, they are not there to establish policies, take decisions and enforce them. How can you ask a scientist to penalize somebody that does not go by the rules? I mean, they are not, it's not their role. And that's the role of the executive and uh, the system of power we have put in place over decades or even centuries. So don't put on their shoulders uh, responsibilities that they should not have. They should provide the knowledge, the logic, as I said earlier, but it belongs to other mechanisms of the society to uh, put the rules, provide the tools of the implementation of the rules, and then control those who, for one reason or another, do not really play by the rules. So the Horizon 2020, the Horizon Europe, is there some does it, is it possible that these help establish the next, you know, uh, 
unicorns, those multi-billion dollar future, I, I guess, money makers, but like, uh, you know, does it help for that? Uh, yes, I'm sure. I'm afraid we are not yet at that era of the unicorns. <laughs> Uh, there is some road to reach this uh, until we have a global scientific community. That, that's a dream. We're not yet there. But yes, I think we are on the correct path.